Arsenal travel to Burnley this weekend. It's a significant game in Arsenal's Premier League title race. Why? I know what you're thinking. Well, because Liverpool and City keep winning. You can't afford to drop points. Sure, that's a part of it. And that's always going to be a part of it when you're in the thick of a title race. The big thing is that Arsenal haven't won five games in a row in this Premier League campaign yet. Last season, Arsenal started with five wins in a row, went on to pick up something like 50 points in 19 games and had this phenomenal run that even if they did drop a point or two, they would then go again and again. Arsenal haven't been able to show that rhythm this season and a win against Burnley would make it five in a row and I think would continue to send a message on the back of the 3-1 win against Liverpool and the 6-0 win against West Ham. But the big talk going into this game is about availability and injured players. Are Arsenal in an injury crisis is what a lot of people keep asking me. I want to explore that a little bit because what we've got here is Arsenal's injury list and the games they've missed this season. Jurian Timber, of course, after that hour against Forest, he looks so promising. He's been out all season. Zinchenko, Takira Tomiyasu, they've missed a significant amount of games. Not loads and loads, but a decent amount. Thomas Partey has missed 23 games through injury. Jorginho, I've got question marks there because, I mean, he's basically carrying an injury. He's been playing through it, apparently, but has made himself available for the squad. Emil Smith-Rowe has had irritating injuries and I say irritating because it feels like he's back then he's not then he's back then he's not I know he'll be disappointed about that Fabio Vieira has missed a significant amount of game time as has Gabriel Jesus via four injuries this season and then of course he had the big knee injury from last year so that is a comprehensive list that is a really comprehensive list when you look at that list of players from Timber, Zinchenko, Tomiyasu you could make a yeah, part of all of them you could make a case for every single one of them starting in Arsenal's best 11 I, I hear that and so when you look Look at that you go wow that's what one two three four five six that's about one two three seven it's about eight players there and you know Jorginho uh, you know okay call it seven without Jorginho and you're going wow like that is a lot of players that Arsenal are missing or potentially missing going into the Burnley game and certainly did miss before West Ham because while the West Ham game was a fantastic result and performance there's a lot of negativity before it because of the 11 that went out from a perspective of we've got nothing on the bench and if this 11 doesn't do the job with the absence of Jorginho and Zinchenko then it's not looking particularly good but I do want to just move away from this word crisis. I think the word crisis is overused in football a little bit. A team loses three games, they're in crisis. You know, a club misses a few players, it's an injury crisis. I don't think Arsenal can claim the word crisis in this incident and this is why. Let's have a little look at, um, at Arsenal's availability across the Premier League in 23-24 season. And I've got the minutes played of Arsenal's top 10 most used players in the competition this season. William Saliba has played every single minute of the Premier League with Declan Rice second there with 2,064 out of 2,160 minutes as well. Bakaya Saka, Martin Erdegaard, Ben White, Gabriel Magalhaes, David Raya, Gabriel Martinelli, Kai Havertz and Alexander Zinchenko all make the top 10 10 most played Arsenal players in the Premier League this season. When you look at that list, again, you could also make an argument that every single one of those players gets in Arsenal's starting 11. You might have questions about Kai Havertz. Mikel Arteta certainly doesn't. You might have questions about Alexander Zinchenko. I hear that. But again, he played pretty much all last season, was key to Arsenal this season, or last season, no saying that he wouldn't be this year. So when you look at the amount of minutes that our core have played, you're talking your starting centre-backs and goalkeeper there. You're talking your starting number six. So you've got that real core in front of goal. You're talking your most deadly, you know, duo in Martinelli and Saka being available and your captain Martin Erdegaard. I think you've got to look at that and say, to be fair, They've been pretty available and Arsenal maybe have had the frustration of never being able to field their starting 11. I think that is a fair case. Last season, we all knew Arsenal's best 11 was Sinchenko inverting, Saliba at centre-back, Jesus dropping in, Xhaka, you know, part of Erdogan midfield. But we saw it, I think, six times in the Premier League last year and it was frustrating that we couldn't use that starting 11 more. This season, I, you know, yes, irritating that one or two have been missing at key points but generally I don't think we can really make the case for it being a crisis when you add to that as well you look at Arsenal's injury list now compared to other teams current injury list Liverpool have the most injured players with 10 players Newcastle Chelsea are missing nine each Sheffield United missing eight Arsenal Brentford and Palace with seven missing and Brighton and Man United with six out the team so again it's not that we've clearly got the most and if you go back to this uh, graphic from January you saw the amount of uh, days lost from injuries for all Premier League clubs Sky Sports making this fantastic graphic and as you can see Arsenal what 
10th, 11th there for, for, for you know days lost from injuries. Others have had it worse this season, so I'm not sure we can throw injuries at Arsenal either now or at any point in the season. And if you are worried about it though, and you are thinking, James, look at the amount of players that we can't field. Squad depth is important. You need you know a full squad, and quite frankly, Arsenal don't have that. I take your point, but... Relax, no need to stress, because here are some quotes from Mikel Arteta, asked about the fitness of Jesus Sinchenko, Tommy Asupate and Smith Rowe. He said some of them have been progressing better than others. We have a training session today and some of them have done a few bits this week. I'm positive that we are going to get a few back for tomorrow. That is really encouraging news. He asked if any have been ruled out for tomorrow. He says at the moment, no. And he says, hopefully a few weeks when it comes to Thomas Partey. So lots and lots of positives there. And there is an expectation that Arsenal have a fully fit squad by the end of the month. And this was mentioned by Mo at Mo Arsenal 86. Big up Mo. He is always spot on with all this stuff. And Mikel Arteta is basically confirming his latest bit of ITK insight where he says for the first time this season, Arsenal expected to have a fully fit squad by the end of the month per his source. So good on Mo. Always gets his stuff right. Always bang on. And great to hear that Arsenal will have a fully fit squad very soon. So my expected 11 coming into the Burnley game is that it's unchanged from the 11 that did really well against West Ham and that is Ryer in goal with White, Saliba, Gabriel and Kivio as the back four. The midfield three that I think a lot of us have suspected is Arteta's first choice midfield three this season with Trossard in place of Jesus in that kind of nine slash false nine position. I'm excited to see this 11 and, and I didn't think I'd be saying this a week ago because Art, Arteta flipped the dynamics. We talked about it in a video, a clip that went out on this channel and on Tactical Insight on AFTV. We talked about how Kivior inverting and feeding, you know, being the connector to a Kai Havertz, it didn't really feel like it worked. Arteta did flip that by getting Erdogan to drop deeper and getting Ben White to invert instead. And Arsenal played some brilliant football down the right-hand side because of the flipping of the dynamics and just tweaking the roles and, and, and the way that this system would work. And I think we'd see a similar thing against Burnley and it makes that 11 a lot more stomachable. The big one is Trossard keeping his place. Now, of course, if Jesus is fit and at his best, he feels like the starting number nine. But Jesus has hasn't really found his best form this season and Trossard has been very very dependable whether it be on the bench whether it be in midfield out on the left and certainly in the false nine his numbers when starting the false nine are eight games starting Arsenal have won seven of them he's got nine goals and assists in those eight games 24 goals Arsenal have scored and only conceded six fantastic record when Trossard leads the line he is very very good in that false nine the way he drops in to alternate with Havertz who can sometimes then move forward in this kind of round door to roll people are saying yeah I I'm not sure if we've seen the full impact of that, but what we have seen is really good interchangeability between the two, and I'll keep Trossard in the team for that very reason. So we look ahead to Burnley then. What do we know about Burnley? Well, they rank 19th in the Premier League. Um, they rank 20th, joint 20th, for wins, although that's slightly unfair. It's actually joint 19th, but basically they've got three wins along with Sheffield United, which is the worst in the league. Uh, 19, uh, sorry, that was wins, should I say, 19 goals, 19th for goals uh, goals scored, 19th for goals conceded, and 19th for XG. There we go. I finally got through it. Um, the point is those numbers look appalling. There's nothing there that, on paper, in those particular stats, make you fear Burnley. However, if you've watched them, you'll know a couple of things about them. A, they stick to their principles no matter what. They play under Vincent Company. They're want to get on the ball they want to you know play the football that got them up and the reality is they'll probably go down playing this football but in the hope that they continue to improve they continue to develop they continue to add you know more players to the project and when they come back up they'll be ready for the Premier League they actually did a similar thing with Sean Dyche different style of football but when they went down they stuck by him and he got them back up and they sustained a position in the Premier League for a very very long time so I think expect Burnley to come play and don't expect them to just be completely all over the place not knowing what what to do they can throw punches at teams in the Liverpool game as you can see here from their XG they did create 1.1 XG at Anfield and you can see the shots there this is via understand you can see you know some pretty high value shots there they did ask questions of Liverpool they did have openings for Farnell was a player that really should have done better with the chances he had and I do think on another day they perhaps punished Liverpool a little bit more but they just didn't have that confidence in front of goal and Arsenal need to be wary of that because if Arsenal are a little bit Lackadaisical, don't take their chances. They could find themselves 1-0 down if Burnley string together a good move and a good opening, which they have done in previous games against Liverpool, both at home and away, and against City on the opening day of the season as well. So, a couple of players to look out for. I think Fafana is one of them, as I said, gets into good goal-scoring positions, former Chelsea player. Uh, 
again, I'm not saying he's an ultra talent, but I think he's been getting into good areas, scored a few goals for Burnley. Odebear, another decent player, but Colliosho is out for this game and he was another exciting player for Burnley. All right, my score prediction is an Arsenal 2-1 win. I think Arsenal will get it done. And when I say 2-1, I think Arsenal will find themselves 2-0 up, looking maybe fairly comfortable by, say, half-time or the hour mark. But they might settle into it. They might not give too much away, considering Porto is to come next week. And that might just allow a little bit of complacency and Bernie nick a goal. I hope that's not the case. I'd love a clean sheet. Arsenal needs some clean sheets, especially for the fantastic defensive performances they are putting in. But I just have a feeling Bernie will get one back, but I'm backing the Gunners to win this game. And I just want to say a really big thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, actually hit the links right here to watch more content like this, including my Football First podcast, which drops every Monday to Friday at 6am. And I know it's annoying. I am really sorry to have to ask, but if you want to show support to the channel, hitting the like and subscribe buttons help promote the content much more than you could possibly know. Thanks again.